buying catalytic converters should be illegal. This is one of the most popular types of comments I've seen on my previous videos about catalytic converters. And while I understand it comes from a place of frustration, as it is often from someone who themselves or someone they know has been recently unburdened by an unplanned weight reduction procedure to their vehicle's exhaust system, it is sadly ignorant of the importance of recycling these valuable components. Besides the many jobs this sector creates, recycling auto catalysts is a critical component in the auto industry and protecting our environment. All internal combustion vehicles need catalytic converters. I recognize this is a divisive statement, but the fact is nitric acid, nitric oxide, carbon monoxide, and hydrocarbons are harmful pollutants that shorten the lifespan of any organism and are destructive to air quality, freshwater sources, and human health. Some people may prefer the way their car sounds when it's straight piped and naturally aspirated, but that's like wanting to smoke on an airplane because you think it makes you look cool. Auto catalysts are necessary to keep our planet livable. That's why auto manufacturers are required by law to have them installed on every car they sell. The only problem is they require some of the rarest and most valuable materials on the planet to function, platinum group metals, or PGMs. These metals, which we don't really use for much else, have a limited supply and demand, and the profitability of mining them stays surprisingly thin. But you know the best place where we can find a steady supply of platinum group metals? Under your car! But when it comes to specific numbers on these things, I'm no expert. Which is why I went to today's video sponsor, PMR. PMR is a Canadian-owned company committed to making the best use of precious metals already in circulation in the auto industry through the use of modern advances in technology used to collect and refine them. I sat down with one of their experts to find out more about the production of these rare metals and how that compares to using the ones we already have. Primary production of PGMs is significantly more expensive than recycling. In the case of platinum, for example, uh, we know that it takes approximately 10 tons of ore to produce a single ounce. And according to the World Platinum Council, that process itself can cost up to $900 for that single ounce. The other thing to consider is the mines themselves. So some of the uh, mines that are producing the byproduct of uh, rhodium mm -hmm. in South Africa and Russia are incredibly old, they're deep, there's a high potential that they could collapse at any time. Um, other factors when you have those types of mines is they're using more uh, fuel-powered machinery, more coal, uh, more labor to extract these uh, PGMs. So that drives the cost up as well. So Drake, it's not just about the cost of what what each ounce actually takes to produce. We also have to keep in mind uh, the multi-level industry behind mining. It's labor intensive, it's energy intensive, and it's environmentally harmful. So mining new PGMs is not only expensive, but kind of sketchy. And yet autocatalysts are necessary on all combustion engines. So ideally we would want to reuse as much as we possibly can. It's estimated that approximately 31% uh, of the PGMs in the global supply chain are coming from recycling. 25% of that is coming from recycled catalytic converters. It's safe to say it works. Do we expect it to rise? Yes. Uh, with tightening emission standards, legislation, and environmental leaps towards a net zero carbon footprint, the world needs PGMs. Catalytic converters are, though, a major factor in the scrap metal industry. For automotive recyclers, for example, scrap cars are infinitely more valuable with catalytic converters still attached. Why? Simply put, a scrap vehicle will sell for its steel and other parts. However, if the converter is still attached, the recycler can drive his profits upwards, either selling or processing his converter and receiving the value of its PGM content. With such a component known for its high value and outstanding demand, the industry faces a persistent problem. Catalytic converters tend to go missing. How can we stamp out the growing epidemic of catalytic converter theft? Besides expanding social support systems to maintain the basic needs of our population in an increasingly uncertain economic climate, obviously. Theft deterrents can be installed, but ultimately thieves will be discouraged from stealing catalytic converters if scrap metal recyclers stop buying stolen catalytic converters. There are ways to accomplish this. 
A buyer should have a solid KYC method. Know your customer and know the origin of the material. That's super important. Some best practices are to take a photo ID of the seller, to have a copy of the title of the vehicle and the VIN. Buyers should also be aware uh, of the laws and regulations in their region. Uh, we know that in 2023 already there are 35 new bills for legislation happening right now. So that's super important. So ultimately, the solution to catalytic converter theft falls on businesses involved in recycling them. Any catalytic recycler who wants to have a successful business needs to protect that business from sketchy deals. And there are a few tells to be wary of. Yeah, I think there's a few red flags to look out for. The first one I would say is any type of converter that looks brand new, so it's shiny, uh, it looks like it just came off a vehicle. Uh, end of life converters typically are rusted or they don't look brand new. You also want to pay attention to whether or not the unit has been tampered with. So we're seeing an influx of units that are coming in with, uh, you can tell that it's been cut open and re-welded. Be, be mindful of those because you may not have the original puck inside the converter. Uh, I think you need to make sure that whoever you're buying off of actually has a dismantling connection. So they're in the industry, uh, they have a registered business, they're either a scrap metal recycler with a commercial yard or they're an automotive recycler. So they definitely need to have connections to automotive, uh, automotive dismantling. The other thing is cash only transactions absolutely need a paper trail for every transaction. Cash only should be a thing of the past. Uh, what else? Anybody who's trying to sell the same types of units in bulk. So let's say they have 20 of the same unit and they're all exactly the same. Huge red flag. Uh, anybody that's wanting to just take any uh, amount for any particular converter, so they're just wanting to offload it. That's another thing to watch out for, right? Because if they just want to take any price for it, it's, it's a little bit of a red flag. Where did it come from? Nobody's really out there buying and selling uh, converters legitimately to lose money. Millions of converters are recycled in North America every year by honest, hardworking individuals who have made their livelihoods in this industry. And stolen converters are not even a fraction of those. According to a study by State Farm, an insurance company, catalytic converter theft rose by 293% in a 12-month period from July 2020 to June 2021. So, when we have 25% of all PGM supply coming from scrapped catalytic converters, it's important that these converters are sourced responsibly. Why? So that honest businesses all through the supply chain can expect that social, legal, and environmental factors will be respected in the industries that they buy from or sell to. Still, theft is a problem that plagues vehicle owners in every city, and major players within the catalytic converter recycling industry are working with government offices to draft realistic and effective federal laws for recyclers. With federal legislation created to uphold and sustain hardworking and honest recyclers, viable and effective solutions will be created. It'll be regulated at a federal level and identical for the entirety of the nation, with firm and strict consequences for converter thieves and associates. However, in the meantime, each state and province have their own laws regarding the purchase and sale of catalytic converters. To remain within the boundaries of the law, be sure to be familiar with proper identification for yourself and the pieces you're selling and buying. While these measures may not bring comfort to the victims of thieves, myself being one of them, my, my truck used to have two of these you can rest assured that the entire industry is focused on keeping converters on vehicles and nobody is interested in doing business with individuals operating outside of the law. While changes are made to stamp out the illegitimate trade of these units, their importance to our air quality is not going to change and any advances made to being able to reuse them more effectively benefits us all. I hope you've enjoyed this dive into the seemingly clandestine world of catalytic converter recycling, and thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more scrap metal, and I'll see you on the next one. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.